Welcome, Terry, to the Unleashed the Knowledges podcast, Everyday Extraordinary, where it's my job to push the message that we all have extraordinary capabilities within us that I believe simply need to be channeled and activated. And I do this by having fun conversations with everyday extraordinary people like yourself. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So Terry, you know, you have quite the resume and we'll dive into it a bit. And, and again, I, I want, I'm going to have you describe more of yourself in your own words. But one thing I will highlight is you are the new author of How to Astronaut, um, you know, genius book, simply because unfortunately, it's such a, a small percentage of people that actually get to go to space and be an astronaut. But this book will, you know, allow the everyday person to you know, peel back the curtain and see what you, what the preparation was like, what it actually is like to be in space and, and, you know, the whole nine yards. So, um, a lot of praise for you to be able to do this and pretty much put your experience into a book that anyone can consume. Well, thanks for, thanks for that. I, and that was exactly what I was hoping to do with the book. Um, it's a collection of short essays. It's not a memoir. There's a million of those out there. I didn't want to write a memoir. I just wanted to take, uh, all the different aspects of spaceflight and, and put it in, in book format, something that I hope is accessible. You know, it's for men and women, it, it's for old and young. It, you don't have to be a space nerd to read it. Um, I try to make it very down to earth, I guess, if, <laughs> if you will. So that was my goal. I want what I, the, the real goal for that book was to make people laugh and say, wow, those were like the two reactions I wanted. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you say the second part, I find myself when I read books, I literally write, wow next to a sentence or I bracket oh, wow. off a, a sheet right. of, you know, something in, in the book. And I've done that through your book as well. And it's, you know, excellent. It's bizarre. Cause it's not like I'm going to go back and say, wow, again, potentially, or, or whatever it may be, but it's like my, my actual thoughts while reading and, and uh, you definitely do that. So that, so, you know, great job in that regard. Um, so the I first question too, yeah. I write in books too. When I'm reading, I'll, I'll, I'll get the pencil out. I, I can't stop myself from writing in, in books. That's why I'm, you know, I have trouble with audiobooks and Kindle because you can't, right. you can't get that aspect. Also, I right. think, you know, reading a physical book is super special in its own way. Right. Um, it is. So I like so it. First question for you. I, I'd love to hear, you know, how you would describe yourself. Um, you know, you've, you've accomplished far more than most humans do in a lifetime. Uh, I'd love to hear how you describe who Terry Burtz is. That is a great question. So, um, you know, it's easy to say I'm, I'm an astronaut or I was an astronaut, but I, that's not how I want to be remembered or thought of. It was my job for many years, but um, so my, my biography was I went to the Air Force Academy, was an F-16 pilot, test pilot, and then NASA astronaut, uh, got to fly on the space shuttle Endeavor, and then I also went back to the station on a Russian Soyuz. So I spent a little over seven months in space total. And <clears throat> since leaving NASA, I left NASA a few years ago. Um, I, I kind of didn't want to do a traditional career. So I've been doing speaking and consulting, but also um, writing. So How to Astronaut was really my second big book that I did. Uh, the first one was a, a National Geographic photography book called View From Above. Um, and I'm really, film and TV is kind of what I really want to do. And uh, I had a chance to direct my first movie this year. It's called One More Orbit. Well, it just came out, just came out a few months ago. Um, we filmed it in 2019. And that was awesome. I mean, I fell in love with, with directing and that's kind of what I want to do. Um, 2020 was a weird year because I've been here in Houston all year, you know, not, um, not out in Hollywood doing that stuff. Uh, but I did make a short film. The, the movie's called Cosmic Perspective this past year. And it's going to be, well, it is actually, it's sponsored by Canon and they're, they're showing it at the Consumer Electronics Show, um, awesome. CES. So they just kind of premiered it last week. And um, uh, so what I really want to do is take Cosmic Perspective and turn that into a like a six-part uh, series, docu-series kind of show. Um, and then there's other TV and film projects I want to do. I've got a few in development um, where I would be the presenter. Um, so that's kind of the world I want to get in because I think the, the world <laughs> needs needs a lot. And I think mm -hmm. through writing books or doing film and TV, that's how you impact people. And so that's, that's kind of where my career has moved, um, at least part of it. <clears throat> awesome. That's incredible. And, you know, you definitely have had a unique experience and it's, all the ideas obviously are in your head and, and to get that into a multimedia form 
is would be incredible for you know the rest of the world to be able to consume ideally through your eyes so that's exciting yeah. um that's you know, what i'm hoping yeah so the biggest you know one of the biggest pillars of your success is you spent 200 consecutive days that you know it's I guess it's one thing to spend 200 days period, but 200 consecutive days is, uh, you know, a feat that is almost hard for me to understand. Well, it's, you know, by all means, it is difficult for me to understand uh, for someone who's never been to space. But um, prior to that, you spent two weeks, if I'm not, if I'm correct, in space, or it was a smaller ex- expedition. Is there, was there, um, you know, an aspect of the 200 days that you can pinpoint that po- like shocked you positively that you might have not captured during the first trip. Um, that's a great question. I have been asked every question in the universe, and I've never had that question <laughs> before. So the my the long duration mission um, was astronauts used to say that the short duration missions were sprints, and the long duration missions are marathons. But to me, it was really just a 200 day sprint because it was really busy. It wasn't quite as busy, to be fair. Um, but there was a point um, where I remember looking out at the cupola. So my first mission, I installed this big seven window module called the cupola. And you can go down there and float. And it's like you look out and you see the planet and the universe. It's the most amazing place that you can imagine. So I got to install it and then I got to use it. And I remember sitting there looking out and I I remember seeing the earth and um, it just hit me that there's 6 billion people down there and there's only six of us up here. In other words, we're one in a billion and just how lucky we were to have this experience and that I wanted to share this perspective. Um, There's something about seeing the planet that, you know, it's been around for a long time (laughs) and it's going to be around for a long time. And so that puts your, um, it puts the cares of earth in perspective that, you know, okay, you, I probably shouldn't get so excited or uptight or whatever about what's going on. Cause, um, there, <clears throat> there's a much bigger universe out there. So I think that perspective, right. um, bit flipped in my brain. Okay. Gotcha. And you, you share a bit, you know, obviously there's, uh, unforeseen emergencies that happen in space that, yeah. you know, no one can predict. And, and one, you share a bit earlier in the book about the challenges of CO2 levels. And, uh, I mean, I personally found it fascinating how you could train yourself during your sleep to realize when a, a reaction might be happening and you can combat it properly. Um, you know, actually I believe, you know, 2021 to my understanding is the 60 year, 60 year anniversary of the first human in space, the one Russian individual, Right. So, you know, people have been going to space back and forth for some time, obviously not a, a large percentage, but we have done that trip. Have you noticed any serious side effects, uh, like mentally or physically that astronauts seem to endure, you know, many years past travel, whether that's CO2 related or just in general? Funny that you say that. Uh, I have kind of a funny looking face. I don't know if you can tell right now. So <laughs> I was at the dermatologist yesterday. My face is like itching. I want to scratch it off. Oh, no. um, getting uh, this ultraviolet treatment for my skin cancer. So um, thankfully, it's a two-part deal. So I did the part one about a month ago, and it is like I wanted to. It was like your face melting in the Indiana Jones movie. You know, it was like hot sauce in your face. So oh, anyway, God. yes, that is one of the one of the side effects of space. Unfortunately, is is uh, you get irradiated while you're up there with radiation that frankly doesn't exist on Earth. Um, cause it can't because of the atmosphere. So, um, the, you know, can't, dealing with cancer and stuff, I, I don't have anything bad. It's just kind of a treatment they do, but mm-hmm. it's something that ever since I've flown in space, I've had to get my face melted off, um, <laughs> about once a year. Uh, and, and the CO2 levels, is a very interesting thing. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've talked to NASA docs a lot. I, I don't, as far as I know, there's not a long-term study. But um, so the, the backstory on that is on Earth, we have trees. It's a pretty good life support system that we have for us down here. In space, we don't to take the carbon dioxide out of the air. And so we have to have machines that do that. And they, they work, um, but not as well as trees. And so the CO2 levels are probably 10 times or more higher in space. A lot of astronauts have different symptoms. A lot of my crewmates, you get stuffy. Um, or your face turns red, ironically, or you just get confused or you're kind of cranky or it's just not, you don't feel great. And um, 
that's fine if as long as that goes away. But are there long term effects? I don't know. So the one the one big thing that we know is you know radiation isn't good. But there's other things like CO two. Um, some astronauts have had problems with the eyesight, um, and th there's other kind of random things. And one of the problems is we just don't have that many astronauts. You know, there's right. only four Americans a year that fly in space, you know, maybe five or six, not that many. Um, and we, we really don't, once they get back to earth, NASA doesn't track all of our health care. They, it, if we go in and tell them what happened to us, that's fine, but they're not doing all of our health care. So they don't have a really good database of, you know, what astronauts have over the long term. So it's a, it's an interesting question for sure. Yeah. Wow. I, I guess I would think that, um, NASA keeps tabs on you guys until, you know, for, for the rest of your life. Um, well, they, you can go, you can go do an annual physical where they, you know, mm -hmm. check your eyes and look in your throat and ask you how things are going and stuff. It's just a basic checkup. Um, and if you, and if you remember all the medical things that you did for the year, you can tell them and they'll write it down, but it's not, that's not really a good <laughs> exhaustive thing. I mean, you know, yeah. I can't remember where I put my car keys. And so, <laughs> what medical exam I did last March and what were the specific outcomes I, you know, I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. So right, it's right. not, it's not the most effective way to, um, to track healthcare for sure. Got it. So you know, obviously we're on this trend that those that do go to space is a very small percentage, but there's probably millions and millions of kids that aspire to, you know, one day be an astronaut. Um, I was one. Know, Yes, absolutely. So I've become aware that, you know, NASA always says, you know, or, or through forums or whatever it may be, NASA says you should be a STEM major. That should be a, a good stepping stone to become an astronaut. And then astronauts will pass down the knowledge, just do what you love, because at the end of the day, it is a small percentage of people mm -hmm. that do, do get to go to space. Right. Um, I'd love to hear from you. If one, NASA has any bias towards certain backgrounds or majors, and then maybe in simpler terms, what exactly is NASA or yourself, if you were in this hiring process, is looking in a like? What are they looking for in a candidate right. to train as an astronaut? Well, well, NASA has a really se severe bias in that they won't hire you unless you have a technical degree. <laughs> when it comes to being an astronaut, um, you know, if you want to be in a, a the the finance person, you have to have an accounting degree. But for when you if you want to be an astronaut, you have to have a technical. So, math or science or engineering things like that. And you can go on their website and there's a list of all the degrees. So that's kind of a must have is a college degree, a four year bachelor's degree in a technical field. But the reality is all the astronauts they pick all have more qualifications than that. You know, many of the scientists and engineers have PhDs. The, the pilots are mostly test pilots. Um, you know, the medical doctors are accomplished. And so, um, when I left NASA a few years ago, we had a astronaut class. That was my last job there was to help them sift through applications. Okay. And perfect. I think there were 18,000, maybe 16,000. I think it was 18,000. There was a lot of people that applied and I think they eventually hired 12, you know, so the numbers are, are pretty small. Um, so, you know, you have to get the minimums, but you're going to also have to do much, you know, more than just the minimum if you're going to get hired. Um, and doing what you love is so important because if you're doing something just to check a box, you're not going to do very well at it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and the odds of getting hired are not a hundred percent to say the least. So then you're stuck in something you don't want. So m one piece of advice is don't do something you don't love. Cause that's just kind of a waste of time. Um, another big thing that, um, piece of advice that I give to folks is you want to do something that helps you stand out. So. Uh, I was going, there's like different categories. There's engineers, there's scientists, there's pilots, there's doctors, there's, there's a few different categories that we break people down into. And for the engineers, there was like five or 6,000 of them. There was lots. So I was helping them sift through them. And every engineer has the same resume. They all have the engineering degree. They all know Python. They all know HTML. Um, they all are a senior engineer on this project or whatever. So everybody has that. So you need to think of what's going to make me stand out. And for NASA, we want operational experience. So flying is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you're not a pilot, most ast most astronauts who aren't pilots are still pilots. They're like, they fly Cessnas on the weekends or whatever. You know, they have a private pilot's license. That's not mandatory. It's not everybody, but 
what that does is it shows that you can do a real world task and not just sit at a computer writing mm -hmm. code or write on a blackboard as a professor. Um, because astronauts are not professors. We're not coming up with ideas for experiments. We're the operational guys implementing those experiments, right? So we, we really want folks that have that operational experience. Awesome. That's super helpful. Um, yeah, definitely not something something I needed to grab from you rather than a, a <laughs> forum or, or somewhere yeah. else in the internet. Um, this next question is from Steve Lilly, who's the individual that won your uh, giveaway oh, who yeah. unleashed Congrats, the knowledge. Steve. Right. Yeah. And he, he, um, you know, he, I asked him for a question and he had told me that he, he's already been following your virtual book tours and, and all that you've oh, been yeah. doing. So a lot of his questions have been asked, but he did have a question. Um, would you ever consider launching back into space as a, as a tourist via blue origin? If that chance were to come up, you know, I would, yes. Um, <laughs> it's, I, when I left NASA, I, I, I went through this thought process of, um, my, my boss is like, yeah, you can get, get to the back of the line. It'll be five years before you fly again. And so um, I could either get to the back of the line and then go do the same thing over again, mm -hmm. or, you know, I was still in my forties. There's all these other things I want to do. So I, it, I just came to the conclusion that I've already done everything I can do at NASA. I was a shuttle pilot and station commander and spacewalks and stuff. So I kind of went off on the, this new path. But I did think to my, I did think that, you know, if I ever had a chance to make a movie in space, um, again, because on my last flight, I, I, I got to make the IMAX movie called A Beautiful Planet. I got to help. I was one of, a, you know, a whole group of us did it, but, and I, I love that. So I always thought if I ever had a chance to make a movie again, I would want to go back into space. Um, awesome. So that's, you know, who knows what'll happen in the future, but that was my thought. Yeah, absolutely. So that was, I guess that goes right into my next question. And we talked a bit about this earlier, but you know, you've made documentaries, you've gone to space, you've flown high performance jets, wrote a book, you know, tons of languages, which in the book, you know, that was your, your sweet spot of, of how you could excel above others. But then it soon seemed that people caught up to you. And, and that was kind of a challenge in some <laughs> yes. regard, at least with Russian, which I can't even, I'm not even going to attempt that. I'm more of an Italian, Spanish kind of guy, romance languages. Exactly. Over Russian. But, it's a lot um, easier. They're a lot easier than Russian. Trust me. <clears throat> I, I bet. So, you know, I, I love to ask again, it, what's unwritten for you? Where do you see your next, you know, 20, 30 years of professional work, maybe, or, you know, plus uh, for the rest of your lifetime, what do you see yourself doing? You know, you talked so, a bit about multimedia, yeah. but maybe something else perhaps. Yeah. 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 So in a perfect world, I, I would get a chance to, you know, make these TV shows that I want, <coughs> hopefully do a few um, films, and, and that would be kind of half of my career. And then the other half of my career, I'd, I'd work on, uh, on companies, especially startups. There's a few tech startups that I'm working with right now. Um, a, this space company just asked me to be on their board of advisors, which I'm, they're amazing. I'm really excited about, about awesome. this, this group. Uh, yeah, Varda is their name. Um, and there's a, there's a green energy slash graphene company that I'm also really excited about. We're, we're close to getting that going. So I would love to help these companies do these amazing things um, because that's how you do stuff, right? It's not, the government's great to a certain extent, but you know, it's the government. And uh, yeah. I think the, the, the way to really get stuff done is through American private uh, industry. So that those are, that's another um, thing that I'm hoping to help some of these companies get going. And then, you know, personally, you wouldn't normally expect this, I guess, from an astronaut, but uh, I just see the, the world's political situation as a disaster. And we, every, all the other things I'm talking about are nice to haves, but that's mm -hmm. mandatory. If we don't get that right, you know, the Republic falls apart. So we have to figure out how to bring some sanity back into our politics. Cause um, you know, between, I don't know if you've seen the social dilemma, but the way- I have, yeah. Yeah, the way social media just fragments us that is a monster that has to be tamed. And the way our political parties are just extreme, extremism breeds extremism. So we have to figure out some way to get moderate, you know, reasonable politics back into our day-to-day -day life. Cause you know, other countries don't have to worry about elections mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And, you know, either the free market democracy wins in the 21st century or the authoritarians win. And it's kind of, I, it's kind of framing it like a star Wars, you know, good versus evil, but it, yeah. we, we got to figure out how to get that problem fixed. 
I absolutely agree. And, uh, you know, Wednesday will bring a change hopefully, but, um, yeah, still there, there's much more work to be done. It's not going to fix the problem. It'll, it's a, it's a good change, but it's not, you know, the sure. problem it runs deep for sure. So. Absolutely. So three last quick questions that could be answered in, in a few words or a sentence. Um, okay. What is a book or a few books you find yourself rereading or gifting to others? Okay, there's one book called um, Necessary Endings <laughs> that, that's talking about business and personal relationships, like how to move on when, you, when it's time to move on. And I haven't gifted it, but I've been telling a lot of people about it and everybody's like, oh, that's a really good one. Um, there's a book called Story and it's kind of like the Bible of screenplays. So if you want to get into Hollywood and you want to be a screenwriter, everybody reads this book. And that's one that I've been talking about and kind of re referencing as a reference. We, so those are two very different, um, <laughs> different books. Uh, and there's another book called um, The End of Everything. It's by a friend of mine named Katie Mack. She's an astronomer. And uh, she's talking about like, the end of the universe and cosmology. It's a really cool book. It's not um, necessarily one I gift to everybody because it's for people who are interested in astronomy, but it's a really cool book. So I want to have her, I'm starting my own podcast. I want to have her on my podcast for sure. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And next question, do you have a personal mantra or motto that you live by each day? You know, something that maybe has been passed down by a parent or through your travels uh, in your life? Yeah. So the, the lesson I learned through my time at NASA, um, don't tell yourself no. So that's one, that's a lesson I tell to kids. I tell to adults, don't tell yourself no. You know, if you got a dream, you got to pursue it. Don't take yourself out of the game um, before it's time. So don't tell yourself no. Awesome. That's powerful. And last question off of the title of this podcast, what is your definition of extraordinary? I think I lost you for a second. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got Sorry you now. Yeah, you're back. Everybody. Okay, great. No worries. I'll edit that out. Just but start up. Yep. Okay. Last question based off the title of this podcast. What is your definition of extraordinary? I think extraordinary is leaving the world a better place than you found it. Um, I just think that's a really simple thing that many people don't do, but the ones who do um, make the world better. So that, that's kind of a goal of mine. I think that should be a goal of everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, if you're in an organization, leave it better when you leave than when you got there. If you're in a family, make it better because you're in the family. And if you're on earth, you know, do something for people around you that, that you know, that is better than when you got there. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Terry. Super profound answers. This was such a pleasure. Again, you know, along with all your accomplishments, but your most recent piece of work or semi-recent based off uh, that, that one uh, documentary you shared is How to Astronaut, your book, and uh, I'll continue to be sharing it on my end. Um, is there anywhere I could send listeners to learn more about you or about your upcoming projects? Probably, I have a website. It's just terryverch.com. Um, and I, I, I try and keep that updated with different books I have going on. I've got a, I'm, I'm writing a kid's book now, but yeah, how to astronaut is the big one. Um, hopefully some of these TV and film projects come out. Um, I'll, my podcast will be there. So terryverch.com is a pretty good place. Awesome. Thanks again, Terry. Thanks Owen. Thanks for having me on.